Bugatti circuit. Brands hatch all the way through to Yas Marino. It's Sonoma. One race. Bumps galore. YMTV. 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 Oh, 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 is it clear? Oh, he's gonna make it work. Oh, it once again. Now there's a swing down towards the double right hand. Who's it gonna be? It's Spin it Lozier. Okay, it's our Ross Carmar. That's racing. That's racing. Focus. That's the acceleration. What a race. What a race. We are live from Laguna Seca in Monterey, California. The first stop of three rounds in the United States. Tonight is round number three of the Online Racing Association's GT300. My name is Andy, AKA THR Flip Mode, and thank you very much for tuning in to YMTV tonight. Alongside me this season is Ajax. And Ajax, this championship took a turn last week at, uh, gee, I'm blanking here. It's at Suzuka. And uh, when Harmonix switched from the Prowler to the Honda. And it's taken another turn as we head into round number three. What has changed over the last seven days? Yeah, so following round two at Suzuka, uh, the gentleman over at Tora decided to do some uh, balance of performance change, uh, balance of performance changes to the PIs of all the cars in the class, and that showed uh, uh, that turned up with them reducing the BRZ and the S2000 from that 620 down to lower amounts and increasing several others. Now, there's some debate on whether this will be a big influencer or not. Um, but it's we got to see tonight. We did see one podium from a BRZ on uh, the earlier event uh, for the EU, but we haven't seen anybody else crack that podium besides an S2000 or a BRZ. So if somebody can make one of these other cars work with this balance of performance change, we might see that tonight. We might indeed, of course, the top dogs, the gunfighters at the top of the standings, uh, those are going to be guys like Harmonic, like Diablo, Savon, GG. Uh, they are in the S2000. I think their car is determined. They're not going to make that switch uh, away from any car. Every driver is allowed one car switch this season. And uh, from the looks of it, I don't think any of them have taken tour up on that offer. They're sticking with the S2000, even though some of the other cars may have been uh, given some enhancements in the form of some PI. Well, tonight it's going to be a qualification session, which is about ready to kick off here in a few moments. Just waiting on a few more drivers to ready up. Then we will go into a race one, which will be based off of our qualification results. Then race number two, how's that go down? So race number two is a 50% of the field is reversed and you go from there. So if we get 16 guys in the lobby, we get the top eight reversed and go. Um, it depends on lobby size, how many guys are registered for each night. But 
it's been about eight so far. One guy, um, I believe it was GG Racing, got a lucky dog kind of happening where he finished in ninth, but one of the guys in front of him didn't race in race two for the first event, so he got bumped up. Um, that occasionally happens, but it's about eight getting hurt for race two. So we will have two races tonight, and they will be both here at Laguna Seca. It's going to be a fun night of racing. It's a track that really has got a few places to make some moves. Uh, and we'll touch on that track later on. Uh, but it's a one every driver, no matter what game you like to play, whether that be Forza Motorsport, whether that be uh, Project Cars, iRacing, uh, heck, I'm probably sure it's even been on a Need for Speed franchise. Uh, Laguna Seca has been there, and every driver should be able to write this track and draw this track with a blindfold. Uh, it's one that's very familiar to everyone, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the most iconic uh, American racetracks out there, especially a West Coast track. It's held Enzo events, it's held some of the top American Le Mans events for years and decades, and it's always one of the highlights on their calendar. Um, they have Ren, uh, Ren Sport reunions here, and Monterey Car Week is in the same area, so a lot of car culture around this track. It just got renamed, no longer Mazda. Um, oh, see that that's as right. they go there this year. Um, so a little outdated in, in the format here, but yeah, uh, brand new sponsor coming on board as the lead sponsor with, for the naming. Well, rescans are expensive, <laughs> and I wouldn't expect uh, an update to uh, Lagoon Seca anytime soon here in Forza Motorsport 7, maybe for the next iteration of Forza, uh, but uh, this time around we will still see the Mazda Raceway banners uh, strung across the map. Uh, so enjoy it while you can, folks. Here we go. It's going to be qualification, the format for qualification, Ajax. How, did this, how does this work for drivers or in viewers new to YMTV? Six laps. you got to make them count. You get your one flying, and then you're on it. Um, this is actually a bit forgiving. The last sector isn't huge or terribly difficult. So you won't see too many guys dirtying in the last sector, dirtying in their next lap. So it should be pretty pretty consistent that they can get some good times in here um, but yeah you got only a few laps to make it count well there you go cars on track we see there a Mazda RX-8 in the form of Hailfire not a guy we've seen in a lobby uh, that I remember maybe maybe I do stand corrected I think he was at the back of a lobby last week at Suzuka but here we go. This is a lobby where we expect to see a lot of the top names tonight. Uh, some of those drivers you can see look up at that scrolling ticker across. Uh, Menace, GG, Diablo, Harmonic. Uh, we got a stacked qualification lobby here tonight. If any of you guys in chat want me to get camera on your favorite driver, let me know and we will do so. But here we go. Qualification. Get those fastest laps in this first lap. Really just uh, get the tires warmed up. Get the uh, tires up to temperature, brakes nice and warm and ready, uh, and then let's go. For me, a guy to watch tonight is going to be GTR Roadkill. He's been the best the rest in standings outside of the S2000s. He's been making this RX-8 work pretty well. He's had some good results in it. Hasn't really challenged for a podium, but with this PI adjustment, I think he can solve a few of the issues that the car had and potentially make it a bit more of a fair fight with these S2000s. Oh, well, here we will see GTR Roadkill and his RX-8 uh, around that final turn, turn number 11, uh, headed up over the hill in the crest and about to start his first flying lap. Got a request for Prod. Let's see what we got here. We got D-Tech. He's a guy in the championship hunt. Uh, I believe he is definitely within the top. I'm not exactly sure where he is. I think he's definitely... Well, let me just check it to a quick look here. Definitely within the top 10. 11. I do know that. He's okay. just outside the top just 10 at 11. His teammate Menace is in 7th. So Prod's had a strong showing in the BRZs. Um, I think one or two of their guys might have missed the second round and just got placed last in that lobby from a disconnect or something. Uh, so I think they've had some unfortunate results there. And haven't quite been on top of their game so far this series. And there you see Menace get a little squirrely coming around turn number six. That's an awfully tough 
uh, turn high speed. It's got almost a little dip into it. Uh, and you really want to avoid the sand on the right. But you want to get as quick of a run as you can going uphill. And these cars with not a lot of horsepower, uh, every mile per hour counts. And uh, Menace might want to do better around uh, his next attempt there. But here we go. The first lap times will be coming across now. And we'll get a flavor of what kind of lap times we're going to see tonight. Let's take a look. Here we go, it's Harmonic with an early pole, 133.1. Savon moves into second, Gigi into third. Uh, Menace there into fifth, Hailfire, Diablo, not a good lap, 134.9. We know that time is going to come down. Uh, and some of the guys may get what's called a dirty lap. Ajax want to touch quickly on what a dirty lap might be versus clean. So a dirty lap is the unfortunate uh, result of you just slightly taking a little bit more of the track than what's actually given to you. You go outside the track limits a little bit, you get a dirty lap. It marks you as um, having somewhere along the line gone outside the boundaries and puts you actually behind anybody else that's had a clean lap. If you do it in the final sector of a lap, it'll also dirty your next lap. So you really want to be sure not to do it in the final sector. And with the corkscrew, if you do make a mistake through the corkscrew, it's a there is some forgiveness there. Um, they've improved that actual boundary, so it's pretty tight now. Um, so that might be the one where guys are getting a little bit dirty. But for the most part on this track, there's not a huge amount of opportunity to really abuse the track limits because you're going to end up in the desert sand. Boy, I feel like um, Spectate's changed a bit with this update. So I'm trying to get the scroll <laughs> The scrolling ticker back. Hey, here we go. I got it back now. I swear, they changed something. <laughs> okay, lap times. Here we go. Uh, another lap coming around uh, and take a look. It's still Harmonic, 133.1. He put that up in the, in the last lap. Uh, but uh, let's see what else. Diablo still 133.5. It's a dirty 133.5. If it was clean, he'd be in second right now. So he's got to kind of get himself together, focus, maybe back off a little bit and get that clean time in. Even if it is a higher 33, he'll still be in good shape. This is AMR Lawrence. Uh, and a guy who's been had a great season so far. Uh, he's currently sitting second right now uh, in this group. Chasing down Harmonic. And his time would be a 133.623. Lawrence has put together a good season so far. We haven't talked about him too much just because he's a quieter guy. He avoids the uh, trouble. In the first round, we see him battling with Savon a lot. But it was clean and it was fair battling. And in the second uh, week... The show was really about Harmonic and Diablo battling at the front, but he snuck in there, and I believe he got a second place in race one and a third place in race two. So he's quiet, but he's, he's racking up the points that he needs to be a challenger in this event, and I think he's only six points off the lead in total points. He's actually only five points behind Diablo in total points, so he's legitimately a challenger in this series. That's AMR Lawrence. Right now we got our uh, on screen is LSEM. Save on 2K currently sitting fourth. Diablo did get a clean lap, 133.5. That puts him in second, uh, excuse me, third, behind Harmonic, behind Lawrence. Uh, then you get to Diablo. Save on GG is your top five. Looks like we have four drivers in uh, times quicker than a 134. GG currently at 134.0. Go to GG, quick look at his S2000, the AMS driver. And he's looking to secure a spot. 134.0 will probably definitely do it. I mean, it doesn't look to me uh, many guys putting up 133s, but 
I'm sure he's a guy who wants to be right behind and as close as possible. Looks like he's got a good lap here. He's certainly keeping Diablo within his sights. Final turn here, and will Gigi do any better? Then a 134.0. Big gap, though, to Gigi to Aftermath. 134.8. And he has. He's definitely got a 133 because I see Saban's got a 133.7. That means Gigi's in the 133s. What was his time? And that was Is that a 133.7 for Gigi. Yep. Saban still sits on a 133.9. He is the fastest guy under 34 in fifth place. So a big gap here. I mean, we got 133s, 134s, 135s even. Uh, so it's a little difficult to tell. This is going to be the final attempt, though, for most of these drivers. Uh, hoping they get a better, get a clean lap. If they didn't get one, oops, shucks, shoot. That's going to be a tough night for you. But uh, we does look like 133s is going to be certainly safe for a lobby a 134 is probably going to be safe for a lobby and i might even say a 135 a low 135 is probably going to get you in look at the guys like adam menace a lobby guys in previous rounds and they're in the 135 gap from the top guys down to the bottom one guy i'm a little worried about is lsm butler he's sitting at a 135.9 really off the pace for him I'm not not expecting him to be that far back he's actually last in the lobby at the moment you gotta wonder uh, did he just bring his suzuka build to uh laguna seca today remember folks these guys can switch these cars up uh, these are not spec builds they can change it put new parts take out parts uh, i gotta keep them within a certain rules of weight and horsepower but for the most part, uh, they can change their car from week to week. And as soon so as that's I said qualification. That he jumped up a bunch of positions. I think he ended up in Did tenth. He? So good commentary. Yeah, one thirty-five. One thirty-five point four. Butler got on his last lap. Well, uh, it's been a busy week here for. Uh, I am TV, uh, obviously with the GT300, and it's starting to get that time of the year, Ajax. You hear the whispers of the Forts Racing Championship. Uh, AOR uh, just announced uh, the Touring Car Championship. Uh, of course, uh, there's also a big event this Sunday. I'm going to get a little tease for you guys. Sunday, the Tora British GT Esports Championship returns. We will be heading to Watkins Glen, and YMTV will take you there. We got your tickets to the show this Sunday. Uh, we look forward to broadcasting that event. It's one of my favorites, and I've heard it's even bigger this year than last year, Ajax. Are you excited? I'm excited. I'll be driving this year, um, so, but I know YMT will be covering it this weekend. 
and according to Tora, they've just eclipsed 200 entrants. It looks like they're sitting around 202 individual drivers for this event. <laughs> I think last year was only, I don't know if they got close to that number. I want to say there was more like 150 something drivers. So they have picked up the registrations. Tora will be busy. Now, YMTV will be busy. That is this Sunday right here. YMTV.com. Uh, excuse me, YMTV Racing will be on YouTube, will be on Twitch, will be on Mixer for all of that coverage. But we were talking BOP adjustments. And uh, we'll start to show some of the changes that these cars have gone through. You're going to see the cars and then you're going to see some numbers pop up next to them. Right there, the Alpha plus 8. What you're looking at basically is the PI buffer or penalty that each car has received. So a PI meaning the performance index. They're allowed to build these cars. The drivers are allowed to build these cars with parts. And each part, performance part they put on, increases that PI. So some cars were given more than the standard 620. And some cars were given nothing. And some cars were penalized. Uh, of the cars here, which were some of the biggest movers here, Ajax, that we saw from last week? So in terms of increases, you got the Alpha, the, the Spider, Barth, and the Prowler going up eight points. Whereas the the car that everybody's trying to beat at the moment, the S2000, was actually penalized seven. And the BRZ, which is in a close second, is penalized three. Um, um, some aren't, or some are whispering that it's not enough to make those other ones competitive or knock down the S2000 enough. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like we'll be seeing an Alfa Romeo 4C or a Spider or Barth anytime soon. And Harmonic was the only one trying to bravely try uh, try the Prowler. It doesn't seem like we'll see those back. But a guy like the Pontiac Solstice that's up to 625 might be competitive now. The MX-5 uh, Miata might also have a chance now. It's up 5 P. Uh, PI. I haven't seen one yet, so I don't know how quick it is. But just five might be enough to make that competitive. It might be good enough for one part that makes a difference for you. Yeah, I mean, these are moves some of the guys, particularly in the Solstice and the RX-8, really, really wanted whether uh, a guy like Roadkill got that buffer. He didn't. His car's still at 620. I know it says green there. It really should be yellow. But the cars around him were basically penalized. The BRZs and the S2000s. So look for a guy like Roadkill to perhaps be a little more competitive than in weeks past. Hopefully we get another peek at the Solstice. We saw them last week uh, in at Suzuka. They really had some trouble coming out of that final turn and onto the straights where they just got really just drove. The S2000s just drove right through them and the BRZs did as well. So will we get a chance to see a Prowler? I mean, excuse me, a Solstice? Well, we might. We'll see if the SFM guys were able to put that car uh, into an A lobby type position. But there you go, the BOP adjustments. Uh, for the GT300. It's round number three, uh, and we'll see how this plays out for the rest of the championship. Still plenty more rounds left to go. Uh, last week, we were at Suzuka, and if you missed it, you missed some great races, but that's okay. We got a highlight reel for you. underway here at Suzuka on Black Lawrence Diablo. This is Savon in the S2000. You are right, pulling away from GTR Roadkill. Darks are all over the back of GG Racing. Inside, first to come out of that turn. Is it going to be GG or Darkser? It is a race down the line, and look at that S2000. That Solstice just does not have enough. Now Nightlock, has he got something for Fuego here? Coming down to turn number one. Fuego's on the outside. Nightlock's off of the grass at Dunlop. A rid of a three wide coming out of turn number six. It's RX8, it's BRZ, and it's S2000 here in the battle for fifth, sixth, and seventh. Well, here it comes, race number one. LMR Harmonic's going to cross the finish line with the win here at Suzuka. And 
race number two here is underway. Low kill is going to make a move early on Aftermath. Aftermath got a very, very slow start. GG takes advantage and he goes and leaves the Diablos to a three wide. Save on in the grass. Aftermath goes wide. Low kill loses out. Brilliant save by him and he keeps the position. Here we go. We hop back down to Harmonic, our race one winner. He's going to make the dive in on Roadkill. And Roadkill watches him go by. Big on mistake from Save on. Six. Save on attempting to pass on AMR uh, Aftermath. Got into the grass a bit. Turn it. To move there on lap number six at the start of this race. Oh, Harmonic's off. Harmonic in the grass. He's going to twitch. Good line, and Butler's gonna go a little wide, that means Fuego's gonna make a move here for 11. And uh, shout out for the mental health awareness uh, livery on this car too. Uh, and you can see Nightlock, he's gonna lock up into turn number one. Menace is now gonna close the gap. And he's going to get his third win of the season. LZR Diablo takes the win here at race number two. Got a good look last week at some of the highlights from Suzuka. Let's catch you up on the standings. I'm going to start right at the top. That's LZR Diablo, Ajax. Really hasn't put a step wrong all season. Three out of four wins, a podium in the other race. He's doing what he needs to do to win at the moment. And Lawrence is very, very similar. Lawrence has four out of four podiums. Just hasn't really been able to crack that. Um, little bit of a barrier that he's got there and actually take a race win and that's what he really needs to do in this week or next week to become the challenger to Diablo is take a win away from Harmonic take a win away from Diablo and really really solidify yourself as the challenger Savon's in that same kind of scenario just one point behind he's been doing pretty much everything right he had one race I think he would drop out of the podiums but he's right there as a challenger and then what about the guys um, even further down? Uh, all eyes, you know, are on the guy in fifth place in this championship. And who's that? Elmar Harmonic. He did do the first week in the Prowler, and that's kind of working against him a little bit at the moment. Once the drop round is factored in, I don't know how much it's going to matter because that is probably going to be his drop round, let's be honest. And that instantly jumps him right up into a challenger position with Diablo. He's only maybe tied on points against the drop rounds factor. Um, a guy like GG Racing or Roadkill, their drop rounds aren't going to be quite as high, so you'll see Harmonic make up more distance than those guys will. That means every race from here on out for Harmonic is going to be crucial. Knowing that he drove that Prowler in the week one uh, really puts him on the back foot. Uh, we'll get a look at the NA team standings here now, and you can kind of just give a quick glance over there. No surprise, LSEM. They've had drivers in every, in A lobby in every round so far, and it looks like they'll continue that streak tonight. Yeah, it's making really our... a two... Go ahead. It's it's becoming a two-team show here. You have the LSEM guys versus the AMR guys. Um, LSEM had a really good first week, and AMR had a really good second week. So it's kind of balanced them out. They're only three part, three points apart. There isn't a drop round, though, so you don't have that to rely on. You have to show up every week. You have to be on top of your game. And a guy like the t prod team or the second AMR team could potentially jump in here if one of those guys misses a round or something happens where they disconnect or something like that and get low points. All of a sudden, this team in third, fourth, fifth jumps way up. There you are, take a look at your favorite driver in your favorite team. They're making their way after four races, two rounds. There's two races per round. And tonight we'll also get that same treat. Two races here at Laguna City. So there's a good look at your teams. And we've already touched on the GT Championship. Why don't we take a look at the track, actually? Laguna Seca. So you want to bust out your track map 
and we have 11 turns here around Laguna Seca. Let's start with points of interest. Not necessarily where we may see a move, but if you're a driver or hop mapping around Laguna Seca, where do you butt clinch? Where do you grip that controller just a little bit tighter? Where does this track make you think, Ajax? I think one of the most difficult ones is six, especially with the, the questionable um, barriers that we get sometimes there. But six is, you gotta be spot on. And with these cars with the low horsepower, you really have to be spot on because you don't have the ability to power up the hill. You have to bring your momentum. Maybe dab the brakes, maybe just let off a little bit and really hit your mark through there. I think that's the most challenging one for this style of car on this track. And then, of course, uh, at the top of that, uh, Ray Hall Straight. Everyone knows it. It's the corkscrew. It's a blind apex. Uh, and then you drop down over 450 feet in total. Excuse me. You drop down uh, nearly over three stories in 450 feet. So you go down real quick, real fast. And you can't necessarily see where you're going, Jax, can you? No, you can't. And it's difficult because you, you got to rely on the guy in front of you to have a similar breaking point. A lot of times we, we have the issues that the course grew is difference in braking or inconsistencies in braking as the guys are trying to get into the course crew and either they go deep and have to cut the bottom section or they just come up too short and the guy behind them isn't expecting it. And it's a tricky one because there's a bend there. Um, there's there's that slight turn into it. It's just a tricky one to nail right perfect every time. Well, our race distance today, it's gonna be a short one. Race one is just seven laps. These are sprints, this first race. Uh, so elbows out here at Laguna Seca. Now let's talk where we might see a move. If I'm gonna make a pass, where should I do it, Ajax? I think the biggest and obviously the first opportunity is going to be the Andretti hairpin. Um, turn two. It, it's it's your hardest breaking point on the track. It's going to be the one that's the widest too, and it gives you varying lines. You can have some guys that will park on the apex, delay the guys behind them. Some will go deeper to try to get a kind of a two apex. Some will try to make it two separate turns. There's a couple of variances in line and it with the cars like this where you have different builds and different tunes, guys will handle it a little bit differently. Whereas if you're defensive or attacking, that'll vary it too. So we might see some over under moves, we might see some late breaking attempts. Um, that is probably the highlight passing area, but there's several other on this track too. Turn five gives a lot of guys opportunity and you gotta really sort it out quick. The six is gonna be single file. So the three, four, five sequence, if you miss one of those turns just slightly, a guy gets a run on you up the five, up the hill to six, you're definitely going to lose a position as you try to tuck back in line. Well, uh, live timing and qualification results are in. Let's now see them on screen. And we get a surprise here on pole. A driver taking his first pole and really taking it away from the guys behind him. That's AMR Lawrence, who takes pole with a 133-0, a full tenth clear of LMR Harmonic and LZR Diablo. So Lawrence leads to Harmonic, that's gonna put Diablo on the second row next to Savon. How about the job from Lawrence? You said it is you were looking for that breakout performance. Well, it's certainly starting to stop. It's certainly his night starting out perfectly, isn't it? Yeah, he's setting himself up the way he needs to. To get on the pole at a track like this is crucial. You're going to have to go into turn one, have your line decided, and be that guy that controls the pace from there. Um, make the other guys keep up with you and drive around you, and that's what he's set himself up for. Guys like Harmonic and Diablo and Savon are capable, but it, it's just an extra trouble because now they're going to battle each other just trying to get to Lawrence. You're going to have Diablo on the second row behind Lawrence. He's definitely going to be looking to try to get inside of Harmonic into turn two if Lawrence picks the inside lane. He's just going to try to follow Lawrence through. 
So now, suddenly Lawrence or Lawrence is by himself, and Diablo and Harmonic are side by side. Lawrence gets that gap he needs. So he's doing what he needs to do here, and it could work out perfectly to him. He's just gotta, of course, remain calm, get the get your breaking points right, and command the control that you need to hot lap out in front of everybody. I fully expect Lawrence to choose the inside lane here. Uh, that way he has the inside for the first turn. First turn is a left-hand turn here at Laguna Seca. Quite unique. But the next two turns are both right-handers. Harmonic will have, if he can stay side-by-side, -side, the inside for the next two. Diablo has his choice. He can go Lawrence or he can stay behind Harmonic. If Lawrence has any sort of hiccup, I fully expect Harmonic and Diablo to be ready. A guy we don't see here in A lobby tonight is LSEM Savon, 2K's teammate, LSEM Butler. So he'll be starting on pole in B lobby tonight. Didn't make it into the A lobby, and that's going to hurt his championship performances, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We don't have the promotion relegation that we see in some other series. So he is locked in there. He could do a double win in B lobby, but you're still not going to earn as many points as the guy in last in A. So that is really going to hurt their team points. Whereas Aftermath and Lawrence here, um, even even their third guy, Nightlock, all, all three of the AMR guys are here. So if one of those has a bad race, the other guys can take over for them. They don't... LSEM lost their kind of comfort or their buffer when they don't get into a lobby, so that's really gonna hurt. They don't count, don't count out Prod either. They're both in here. DTEC and Menace did their job. They're both in a lobby. Let's talk about some new guys we haven't seen this season. I see one name sticking up, and that's Cradium from the SFM team, Team No Practice. I'm familiar with Cradium from the Trans Am series uh, and some of the other series from Tora. Uh, he's a new guy here in GT300. He's in the Pontiac Solstice. So we have, what, looks like two Solstice tonight uh, from the SFM team. They were not fast on the straights. Did the BOP adjustments help so far? Good. It wasn't an A last week. I think it was towards the back. We didn't get to see too much. Oh, right. DJ Professor nice. makes a return. Uh, Professor K72 makes a return to A lobby after missing out last week, so that's a good improvement from him. Uh, Apex Fuego, uh, Fuego is a guy that we've talked about a few times. He's in here. Um, brand new is uh, TLR Overdrive. I haven't seen him yet, and he puts the he puts in the best of the rest. He's the number one car that's not a S2000 in seventh place. So maybe he's found something that works with this RX8. And like we talked about, road kills in here too with an RX8. An overdrive, definitely a veteran of the Toro community. As long as I've been in Toro, I've seen overdrive uh, in the forum. So I know he's bringing a lot of experience with him. And you're right, he's sitting in an RX8 tonight. So the BOP adjustments, well, I don't know. We got quite a few S2000s at the top of the grid today. Well, here we go. It's going to be race number one. And I uh, uh, just want to quickly go over our format, uh, Ajax, for how race number one is going to start. Yep. So we get a warm-up lap, and then it'll be seven laps of racing. So you'll see these guys wiggle it out, warm up the tires, go around once, and then as we get onto the front straightaway, they'll sort themselves out and get in line and get ready to go. Seven laps, seven no laps. pits. Just go sprint all out. So here we Seems are. Like we're having some it party is... issues, so everybody's dropping out. Yeah, you're right. I guess we'll drop back out too. We're gonna look at the oh. live timing there. Uh, so Amar Lawrence again on pole, Harmonic, Diablo, Save on 2K, AMS GG Racing, and M Sport makes a return. Uh, for the Midnight Racing Team. Uh, those will be your S2000s. Overdrive, Darkser, DTEC, Aftermath, Menace, Roadkill, Apex, Fuego, Cradium, Nightlock, and DJ Professor K72 will be our A Lobby. Uh, drivers who did not make it, of course, LSEM, the Butler Hailfire, 
uh, Tri Passing, Big Ben, Insanity, Genesis, Roscoe, P. Coltrane, and Severius, a drive we have seen before in A Lobby, are some of the guys to look out in B Lobby tonight. So it looks get, like they're uh, all set. Okay. Except for Lawrence now. Shame on Lawrence. <laughs> and me too. Yeah, we didn't we didn't talk about M Sport. He had a good race last week. Um, involved in some incidents, probably not his own creation a lot of times, unfortunately. But he's he's a guy that's emerging as a a talent that we haven't seen too much of yet. So we're gonna try this one more time, trying to get into in our cars on track here at Laguna. Let's see. There is AMR Lawrence, our pole sitter, and he'll be on the inside to his right. It is going to be LZR Diablo. He is in the white S2000 with the intent in that pink S2000. That is going to be LZR Diablo. LSEM, Savon 2K, will be in a white and blue S2000. He'll be starting his race in the second row in fourth. In fifth, AMS GG Racing. I'll get a look at his car in the number 367S2000. Behind him, MN, uh, M Sport, also in the S2000. And then we'll get to look at TLR Overdrive, the first time we've seen him this season. And there he is in that RX-8. A familiar white and blue Alaska Airlines. Team out of Hailfire, I believe. We've got the Darkster here in 8th. In his the first of the S2000s, making their way around turn number six and up the Ray Hall straight. Behind him is going to be Prod D Tech in ninth. Ten is Aftermath. Eleven is Menace GTR Roadkill. Apex Fuego, Cradium, Nightlock, and DJ Professor will round out our field. We'll start tonight's racing from MNR M Sport in the Mental Health Awareness. S2000. And he will be the third row of this grid. Turn number 10 here. Quick bank turn. And then we will make our way around turn number 11. Look out for Lawrence starting this race on pole. Harmonic on his outside. Diablo in the second row. LSEM. Save on 2K. GG. And this is. M Sport in the S2000s behind him. Well, then that's where you'll find the Solstice and the RX-8. Laguna Seca, round number 30. Cheap, and here we go. It's a good start from Lawrence Harmonic. Not very quick. Diablo quickly moves into second and pushes Harmonic out wide. Here comes M Sport on the inside. He's going to win. The, Savon's going to get pushed out, and he's going to get slow hung up on the tire wall. M Sport's going to lose out. So it is Lawrence, it is Diablo, uh, excuse me, Harmonix now back in front of Diablo, and then GG now in fourth. So M Sport hits the tire wall on the inside of turn number one. Ajax, not a good start. Yeah, unfortunately he clipped the tire there. Um, looks like he's avoided damage. He's back in ninth at the moment. Still seems to be running okay, but a couple positions back now. Uh, definitely time to make it up. He's just got to keep calm if he doesn't have damage. It's okay. We can make it up. You were quick in qualifying. Just pick and choose your battles here. Um, it's actually pretty calm throughout the pack. We got one or two side-by-side -side battles, but nobody really had a big off. No big collisions at turn one. It's been relatively calm and easy. These guys are really respecting each other in this race so far. Darkshire got a great run up the Ray Hall straight and tried to get alongside Overdrive. And then now... Broad d -Tech, uh, at the bottom of that turn. It's M Sport making the move back up. D-Tech's going to twitch, and he's going to go almost into the pits on lap number one. Had to make a save now hard under the brakes. D-Tech in turn number 11, having a rough last sector here at Laguna Seca. But unfortunately, he holds on to his position. It's Darkser falling down the order. So Darkser now, he is in 10th after one lap. 
make a move back on the prod team here. They're going to go tandem. Both in that BRZ. Look at this. Solstice. It is just absolutely great under grip. He's going to have to have uh, a much better lap number two than lap number or, uh, lap number one, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Certainly. Uh, it's been seemingly great. They do really well in a straight line once they've got everything moving. But that the acceleration zone seems to be where they struggled. And then the prod guy has always seemed to be a little bit uh, breaking zone. They seem to have it settled today. We've only seen one lockup. Right now, it looks like the solstice is going to really be a challenge to hold the back. Well, here we go up the Ray Hall straight for the second time here. And it looks like d going to power his BRZ past SFM Darkster there. 4 8th, 9th. And we got side by side. That's going to be Fuego behind this group on screen. And Menace now. So Fuego, Menace in another car. That's going to be Roadkill in his RX 8. Aftermath, Nightlock, DJ Professor making some moves here at the back of the order. Let's go. We'll stay on this here just for the end of this lap around this final turn number 11. Darkster side by side with Rod D Tech. We saw D Tech in the BRZ be quick here in earlier rounds. The Solstice with the BOP adjustment. Any help? Not today, my friend. And the turn, that was going to be a dive bomb from Darkster. Can he hold on to the position? No, it's now on the inside is D-Tech. Can he get alongside and get that Solstice up here for turn number two? No, D-Tech's going to hold on to ninth. Let's go up this order. And let's take a look at uh, our championship leader, LZR Diablo. Lawrence is holding on to first. A great start there from the AMR driver. He's got Harmonic and Diablo behind him. Could this be the first? non-win from LMR or Diablo. Lawrence doing his work. Yeah, it's going to be hard for these guys to pass Lawrence because he's got the pace to hang with them. So he's going to go defensive anytime they get close and probably park on some apexes, really back them up. And then by doing that, Harmonic has to worry about Diablo behind every time he gets close to Lawrence. So Lawrence is kind of in control at the moment. He's just got to be sure that he's hitting his points making sure his breaking points are good and that he's not missing a gear or anything. Um, and it's going to make it really a task for Harmonic to A, hold off Diablo while also trying to find a place to get by Lawrence. Well, coming around for lap number four now of seven, it's AMR Lawrence, who's led from pole. He saw an early threat, but he held on and drove his S2000, and it's held on to it here in first. It is Lawrence, Harmonic, Diablo, Gigi, and Savon, and then in sixth will be M Sport. So that is one through six is all S2000s. Overdrive in seventh in the RX8. Yeah, good good news for M Sport. He's already recovered up to where he qualified. So those three positions he lost on lap one, he's already managed to wake, work his way back up. Overdrive's doing really well in this RX-8. He's right on the tail of M Sport, still putting in an effort. I don't know if it quite has the legs to keep up with M Sport's S2000, but it, it's definitely the best of the rest so far. So this is M Sport. You see Overdrive behind him. And get a good skid there coming out of turn number six. And now cresting and into the corkscrew. And M Sport got a great drive out of there. Overdrive, not so much. Leaves him behind just a little bit. And we're quickly making our way through this race. One guy that's the on gap. the move is Apex Fuego. He's he's gone one or two positions up each lap. Um, just getting by Darkster as Darkster made a mistake off of turn six up the Ray Hall straight. And now he's looking forward to Prod D-Tech. So this is Fuego in the S2000. And he's been part of this mid-pack battle all season. Uh, and looking to do the same here. Right now getting a good run and really just driving away from Darkster here. On the start finish, starting lap number five into turn number one. We see Darks are really, really strong on grip, and look how much space he makes up. 
And he's got a BRZ and Menace behind him. Aftermath, his teammate is way out in front right now, and that's AMR Lawrence. A far way away from this battle. Menace taking a look at Darkser, not quite. But that is your 9th, 10th, and 11th place drivers. You know what? Look at Lawrence on that map. You know, I want to get map. I want to get times up here for a second. Can we get times? You might want to jump up to this battle because harmonics all over the back of Lawrence at the moment. I thought he was pulling away. No, harmonics that close. So here it is. Yeah, they're that on close with Alamo harmonic. Bubble. <laughs> Playing tricks on me on the map right here. Not a passing turn. Harmonic got a beautiful line. This turn is turn number eleven. Lawrence is going to be on the inside now, on a defensive position. Harmonic's got a perfect apex. But Lawrence, great drive. And just two more circulations around Laguna Seca. Just over, just under five miles. Diablo's lurking just behind Harmonic, about 35 feet behind, and consistently about 35 feet. So Harmonic keeps getting those proximity arrows popping up behind him, and he knows that Diablo's there just lurking, waiting for an opportunity. If if he does, if Harmonic gets a little too close to Lawrence and gets a bad run out of one of these turns. Lawrence clearly driving his S2000 defensively right now. Harmonic, a little bit of a twitch there. Does Diablo have any sort of run? Not into turn number six, but here. Coming up the Ray Hall straight and uphill. Certainly Harmonic sizing him up now. He's right into the draft of AMR Lawrence. Is there going to be a move under brakes here into the corkscrew? Not yet, says Harmonic. Lawrence, bit of a mistake there. Bit of a mistake coming out. Boy, these two are, or these three are very, very close now. Yeah, Harmonic took a little tap from Diablo at the top of the corkscrew, and I think it just bumped him a little too deep to be able to take advantage of Lawrence's mistake there. Oh, and Diablo, Diablo under brakes. Move. He's going to make a mistake. That was not a good move by Diablo, and he knows it. He lets off, and he's going to give Lawrence that spot back, but damage done. Lawrence lost out on his first place spot. Harmonic doesn't need the invitation. He gladly will take first place, but... Uh, a, a bold move, like you said, under breaks. Clearly a mistake from our championship leader, Diablo. Uh, but that's really only cost Lawrence. Diablo still in third. And Lawrence, the wheels are falling off that S2000. Now this is fair game now. Diablo can make this move. And will he make it here? Lawrence has fallen from first to third here on the final lap. Oh, it's another touch! A huge incident there. Lawrence onto Diablo. Definitely not on purpose. They were driving in tandem. But boy, just total loss of speed there from Diablo. Tit for tat. Ouch. They fall off the podium. Lawrence was once in first place at the very end of lap number seven. And he's fallen all the way down to fourth. Diablo off a podium right now into fifth. And Harmonic now is in first. Who's in second? That's Gigi. He didn't have to do anything. He just drove his S2000 cleanly here. And he's now going to get his first podium. One more turn, or one more lap here. Give me one more turn here for the final lap here at Laguna Seca. And it's going to be LMR Harmonic in what will be a discussed event and a discussed incident on the forums. LMR Harmonic crosses the finish line. And his second win of the season here at the GT300. It's going to be AMSGG Racing in second. It's his first podium. Savon gets some very, very much needed championship points. But the story was AMR Lawrence and LZR Diablo. And it started on the final turn, turn number 11 at lap number 7. And it continued on lap number 8. Dia uh, Ajax. And SI is like it. Yeah, I'm sure somebody will have to review it at some point. Um, I don't know if Lawrence is the type of guy to go into the extent of doing a review. I have, I don't know him personally. Um, some guys will just let it go, know that it's a game. 
some guys are hunting for that championship. So, um, yeah, it's definitely going to get reviewed at some point. Um, it doesn't really matter, though. Harmonic really wasn't involved, and he won the race. So if there is a penalty, it's going to go to Diablo. Um, and, and that's it. Really help out Lawrence at all? Lawrence. Yep. I mean, it, it'll... Lawrence is in second place in this championship. So yep. anything he can do to get Diablo further down the order, if he's looking to be... If winning the championship is his goal, then yes, I would file the SI. But... Uh, you're right. I see both sides of that. Uh, clearly, Diablo knew he made the mistake, let off the throttle, and let Lawrence take that position back. But damage was done. Fair move. Absolutely a fair move on the final lap for Diablo to go side by side there. Um, it did look like Lawrence then kind of got stuck to the back bumper of Diablo. And then it just made worse, and the wheels just fell off. And it, it got ugly there on that last lap. Yeah, it looked like they came together a little bit and got the bumpers hooked. Um, there's a slight bend there, so one guy might have tried to straighten it out, and the other guy straightens it out, and then they come together, just converging. Um, and it just hooked. And that's really where it came down. Lawrence obviously let off the brakes as, um, as Diablo was sliding, and you got GG and Savon go flying past. And it's their opportunity, why not? So. Yeah, that was the bigger issue, is that they really lost the positions there. Well, if you want to quickly run through our order of race number one, because race number two will be kicking off here very shortly. we got one more race, folks, but our race number one order, Ajax. Race number one winner, LMR Harmonic in the S2000. In second place, GG Racing. In third, Savon 2K. Lawrence, after the issues with Diablo, ends up in fourth. Diablo in fifth. MNR Emsport recovers from his uh, first lap issues to finish in sixth. TLR Overdrive is the best of the rest in the Mazda RX-8. Prod DTEC R will be our pole sitter as he finishes in eighth in race one. Prod Menace in uh, ninth, AMR Aftermath in tenth, eleventh is Darkster in the Solstice. Uh, GTR Roadkill in twelfth in the Mazda RX-8. AMR Nightlock in the S2000 is 13th. Cradium is 14th. Uh, Professor DJK72 is 15th. And Apex Fuego ended up 16th. We missed something there. Something happened with Apex Fuego where he dropped about half the pack. He was at one point around 8th or so. And yeah, ended ninth. up in 16th. So there might have been some other... There was a battle from about 9th to 13th throughout the entire race. And he was involved with it. So... There might have been something that happened there. It might have been a mistake. It might have been an incident. Um, so there might be some more reviews besides the event with Diablo and Lawrence. Fuego, he's a guy who filed an SI against Darkser in between uh, Suzuka and this week. So we know, we know he knows how to file one. <laughs> so if a steward inquiry is to be filed, maybe Fuego is involved here. So... Uh, if there is a replay out there of the race number one, be sure to let me know on Discord in the Quora chat, uh, and uh, I'll look to get uh, a full race replay for action we did not see on screen. So again, let me know on Discord if any of anybody or any of the drivers do have a race one replay. But race number two, we're going to be shifting up and changing up this grid, Ajax. Who are we looking to start at the front of today's race? So, if we're going to swap uh, half the field, we're going to see Prod, DTEC R, and the Subaru BRZ, and TLR Overdrive, and the Mazda RX-8 are on the pole. And I think this is the first time that we've seen a race, even if it is a reverse grid, to not see an S2000 start on a pole row. You might be right. So we got an RX-8 and a BRZ. DTEC's been up here before at Indy. He started uh, race number two in the front alongside GG. Uh, so DTEC, Overdrive, M-Sport, Diablo, Lawrence, Sabon, GG, Harmonic, and then uh, Aftermath, Darkster, Roadkill. 
Moments away from race number two. Race number two is going to be a bit longer. That was an awfully fast race, Ajax. But race number two, a bit more laps, isn't there? Yep, we'll be going for 17. So you'll see 18 on the count because they they add in that uh, warm up lap and then 17. Um, you'll have that pit stop this race too. So it'll help some of those guys out that were in traffic before um, in that mid pack battle. Some strategy will come in. Get yourself some open space and then see how it shakes out. Um, we've seen that come into factor at Suzuka. We've seen that come into factor at Indy. Um, Suzuka more so because I think that's what um, took uh, Elmar Hamas. He was probably in a position to win in race two, and Diablo's better strategy ended up uh, leading him on to victory in that race. I'm not mistaken, I'm not getting them backwards. Oh, what's that? I'm sorry. Yeah, so race two, uh, last week, Harmonic decided to stay out, work his way through some traffic, yes. whereas Diablo pitted early, um, and that, that got Diablo the win, and that strategy worked out for him. So again, we have the strategy differences. It could factor in at the front of the pack. The mid pack, you'll see probably more of it factor in if guys decide not to cover off on early pit guy. Um, you are supposed to go two full laps. If, if the parade lap is counted, that's questionable, and we've seen Diablo go in questionably early. Um, he hasn't got an SI, he hasn't got a warning or anything for it, so it seems like he's doing everything by the book. Um, but he's, he tends to be the earliest pitter. Yeah, I mean, some of the first opportunities to pit, uh, Diablo will take them up on that offer. Uh, moments away here from race number two at Laguna Seca will be our feature tonight for the GT300. I mean, it will be DTEC Overdrive. M Sport Diablo, Lawrence, Savon, Gigi, and Harmonic. Quick note the BOP adjustments, Ajax, well, we still had S2000s, and they finished one through six. So, uh, didn't do much to stop the S2000 dominance, but this time around in race number two, we'll get a chance to see an RX-8 and a BRZ. Leading the field here, it'll be DTEC on pole in TLR Overdrive in the Alaskan Airlines RX-8. Yeah, our BOP adjustments really haven't factored into that top five or six places, but the mid-pack here has changed a lot. We see three RX-8s, we've been only getting one or two. Um, we see a handful of BRZs, and we see the solstices again. So I think it's working. It just hasn't worked its way to the front of the pack, unfortunately. And again, that also really could come down to, you know, the drivers behind those cars and the guys holding the controllers. I'm sure the BOP adjustments for, uh, like you said, further down this pack, uh, certainly lobbies B and lobby C uh, there, those got drivers will certainly appreciate the BOP adjustments a lot more than the guys in our racing. We're probably yeah. How much PI is a is a force of championship guy worth? That's that's kind of what you have to factor in when you're doing these community events. The average guy that sits that just does one race a week, or the guy that is competitive at it and goes to the world championships, and it's hard to balance hard that out and try to make it all work. And obviously, you, obviously you, you can't. So here we go, race number two. It's going to be 17 laps. There will be mandatory pit stops here. It'll be menace on pole, or excuse me, DTEC. Uh, on pole, uh, TLR Overdrive in the white Mazda RX-8, M-Sport Diablo, Lawrence, this is Savon 2K. And our first three rows get a look at the rest of the field behind in race number two underway. It's DTEC on the inside, Overdrive not the best of starts, Diablo looking to make a move early here. Into third already, M-Sport Lawrence on his inside. It's getting busy here in turn number one, and there's going to be contact. It's going to take out a number of drivers here. 
it's gonna be D-Tech escaping. Harmonic's gonna find his way up into third. Where did Diablo drop down to? Way down this Diablo order. dropped all the way down to 13th at one point. He's back up to 11th, making a really good decision in turn three. But it, he was really the, the guy, unfortunately, there on the outside that got pushed all the way out. I'll go down to seventh, just get it right in the heart of this field. This is M Sport in fifth, looking back to Darkser, Lawrence, Menace. And I do see a pink S2000 back there somewhere. Maybe we should go further down this order, because it looks awfully busy around that pink S2000. There he is, Diablo. He's going to be on the outside. Turn number six, he's going to go off into the grass. I see another prod car in the grass. That's Menace now dropping down the order. So Diablo, our championship leader, a terrible lap number one. And really, his night really did not start well. Uh, it got basically, it turned for the worse on lap number seven. And this is Overdrive making some moves here in the last sector of Laguna Seca, moving up into eighth. But our order, after one lap, it's D-Tech, Harmonic, Savon, GG, M Sport. Lawrence, and now you can see the drivers on screen. That's Darkster in the Pontiac Solstice in seventh. And this is TLR Overdrive in the RX-8. You can see Roadkill behind. Let's go to our championship leader. He's currently sitting in 13th place. Looking ahead to Aftermath. Harmonic makes a move on D-Tech for the lead to turn one. Uh, just a little bit better on the break and took the inside line, and D-Tech gave it up without too much of a challenge. Diablo makes a move of his own on to AMR Aftermath. He's got to get up this order. He's had not, he had a terrible, in his opinion, race number, excuse me, race number one. And he needs a better race number two, especially if that guy out in front gets a win here. LMR Harmonic. Making a move around Nightlock now is Diablo. Yeah, the man to watch is going to be Diablo. How much can he recover? Because we think he has the pace. He definitely has it based on qualifying times to make his way up through here. Um, how much can he make up? Harmonic has been just as quick, and now he's out in front. Um, and Savon is right there, too. If you're Diablo, though, I'm thinking Pit. I'm thinking Pit now. He doesn't need to be driving through traffic, right? Yeah, as soon as you're Three cars in front able of to Pit, I would Pit. Absolutely. I think he's got to go one more lap before he can. I think you'll see him pit next lap, unless he's a pack of cars pit in front of him. He's going to get around that RX-8 of GTR Roadkill for 10th. Now, the next car on his target is going to be TLR Overdrive and another Mazda RX-8 starting lap number three. And he's going to do it easily here on turn number one. He's going to position his S2000 on the inside. And now he's got Darkser in that Pontiac Solstice. That Solstice is great here on the slower section. It's got a lot of grip. But that S2000's got the top end here. And when does Diablo do it? Look how close he is. He was contacting race number one at this very spot. And this time, we lose Darkser off screen. But it was a clean pass. Yeah, so Darkser Diablo, just took a little order. too much curb. Clipped that inside mound curb and just bounced himself out a little bit too wide, whereas... Um, Diablo's line was a bit better and just made it through there a little bit cleaner. And Overdrive makes a pass on Darkser here for eight. So Darkser down two spots here in lap number three. Here comes Roadkill. And headed uphill to Ray Hall straight now into the corkscrew. Oh, and the Prod guy is going to back off. That's D-Tech off. D-Tech's off to the corkscrew. He was on was pole. A there was a pack about five of them first. trying to go, I'll go for the same spot into the corkscrew, and he unfortunately was the one that got tagged in the quarter panel and spun into the outside wall. There goes Diablo into pits. Here comes Darks into pits. I imagine d -Tech's gonna pit as well. We'll go up to, let's go to our leader here, Harmonic, and see what it looks like from his perspective. All alone here, all alone. I barely see headlights off in the distance. And that car in second place is LSEM, save on 2K. Where is Lawrence here? Lawrence is in, I believe he's in fourth. So Harmonic all by himself. Doesn't have to pit now. He can pit when he decides. Yeah, Lawrence was just 
didn't quite have the opportunities making his way through traffic as some of the other guys did. And a guy like Harmonic is cutthroat. If he sees an opportunity, he's going for it. And he's made his way up there by some luck where Diablo got the bad luck. But at the same time, you put the car in the right position, you get the position. So he's, he earned his way up there. Now guys like M Sport, Lawrence are trying to chase him No, down. it's going to be M Sport. M Sport makes a huge mistake coming out of turn number six. Up the right hole straight, and he got his rear tires onto the curb, and then uh, nearly spun the car, but did save it. But he might lose fifth. Sorry to cut you off there. No, no. Commentator curse there. Unfortunately, I was just praising them for being in fifth. Oh, it's gonna be Savon now. <laughs> Savon's gonna hit a braking board marker, the hundred yard marker. That's gonna kick off to the track. It's gonna be Savon. Barely saves that car, and a funny spot. A spot I really wouldn't think that happens much. And that's turn number nine with Savon. Now he's got Gigi and Lawrence in his rearview mirror. And Harmonic's loving it. He's just slowly pulling away as all these guys struggle little by little. You were right. These guys are struggling. Maybe they're driving the S2000 the same way they were in rounds one and rounds two. And maybe that handful of PI that they lost, that seven, eight points, uh, maybe it was a little more than we anticipated. Yes, it's still the strongest car of the field from the data that we're seeing in the race that we're seeing today. But clearly, they can't drive the car the same way they were before. We're seeing guys like Savon who haven't made mistakes. Uh, we're seeing guys like Diablo go off track at turn six. Uh, so... Clearly the S2000, something's different. Or is Laguna Seca playing tricks on everyone? I thought, like I said, everyone knows this track. Um, maybe it's both. It just seems like the, the S2000 dropping down that 7PI is just a little bit more unstable. These guys seem to be getting a little bit more twitches on the curbs and um, braking zones just to seem to be a little less confident than they were. So I, I, this definitely depends on what part they took out of their build, but it just seems a little less stable throughout the, the race for most of these guys. Well, here comes Gigi starting his lap number six right behind LSEM save on 2K. The move here to be made in turn number one. He's going to get up alongside him, try and find any room. It's clean so far. Savon and Gigi nearly coming together here in lap number six. Gigi and Savon very, very close. These guys are battling for championship points. I believe these guys are fourth and fifth. Excuse me, fourth is Savon, fifth is Gigi in the standing. So this means a lot to these guys. And they're both coming off good results in race one. They were both second and third after Diablo and Lawrence had their issues. So. They're looking at a really good batch of points at the moment, with Diablo being so far behind and Lawrence being behind them at the moment on track. So our leader, LMR Harmonic, this is second and third. Savon and Gigi. AMR Lawrence in fourth. Diablo has made his pit stop, but he had a very, very... Look at Lawrence! Almost loses that car coming down to the corkscrew. But Diablo had a very, very tough start to this night tonight, and it's continued... Here in race number two, he has made his pit stop. All eyes will be on him as these guys start to make theirs. Savon stays out, Gigi stays out, and so does Lawrence. Let's see if we can find any more action here on our mini-map. Oh yeah, there's something behind here. We'll go to Nightlock in eight. That's Nightlock and Menace. Turn number 11. Exchanging some paint, some prod for AMR there. S2000 for BRZ. And they're starting lap number seven. And here comes Nightlock on the inside. Gives him a little touch. Cradium there, ready to pounce in the Pontiac Solstice. How about this battle? S2000, BRZ, and Pontiac Solstice. Roadkill up seven spots so far in this race. Of course, 
haven't got through our full pit sequence, so Roadkill on the move. Diablo, of course, the big mover down. Uh, and he's currently down seven spots. M Sports made his pit. He's way down. Uh, and DJ Professor will round on our field here for currently sitting in 16th place. But Harmonic Savon, GG Lawrence. This is Cradium currently sitting in ninth place. Almost gets in the back of Menace. Did I lose you, Ajax? Is he in the party? No, I'm trying to keep an eye on the guys that have pitted and who haven't. Um, and it's hard to tell because a lot of the guys that have pitted ran into some issue in some way. And we haven't really had a guy come out or come into the pits cleanly and come out cleanly. So um, once one of the top three guys pits, it'll probably get us the answer. Something happened with GG Racing. He's down in fourth. Oh, he's actually coming out of the pit. So he's our first probably clean pit. Um, and he comes out in ninth. And he's dead even with Diablo. So we'll go down to ninth. GG versus Diablo. S2000 versus S2000. We ride aboard AMS GG Racing now. So that means Diablo's uh, done a decent job of recovery. He's around second place on track once the pits work their way out. He'll be in that battle with Savon and Lawrence. Harmonic's really done enough to check out. But Diablo, if Savon or Lawrence pits, could see himself locked off here in a second. GG had his best performance of the season in race number one tonight. And he got his first podium and got a second place behind LMR Harmonic. LMR Harmonic leading this race, so he's looking to secure his third win of the season and tie Diablo for three wins. Diablo is going to need a near miracle here, currently sitting in ninth. These two guys have made their pit stops. Harmonic has not. He can choose when he wants to. He's also got the fastest lap of the night. He's into the 32s. So we thought we saw 33s for pole, uh, a 33-0, I believe, from Lawrence and... Uh, Clearly, Harmonic is finding pace. Diablo, though, keeping his distance and uh, managing the gap there to AMS GG Racing. Let's see here. Look, I see something else down here in, uh, we'll go to another 14th place. The back of the field here, that's going to be D-Tech, Darkser, and M-Sport. M-Sport had a, I know he was a big loser there in that incident on turn number one he's currently sitting in 14th place is m sport in the s2000 see fuego there in the pits and he's decided to take his so coming out of the pits though it's night lock and aftermath and it's suddenly got interesting here 9 10 11 12 13. a night lock's gonna go deep that's gonna push dark sir aftermath is gonna move up three spots d tech moves up four m sport touches dark sir kratium's now in the mix Wow, where did Cradium come from? Five cars now, something battling here. Six cars. <laughs> Brilliant move from d -Tech. He just really braked early and got to that inside and just held it as everybody else was getting bumping and getting pushed wide. He just ran around the inside nice and clean. Oh, m -Sport, heavy braking there. And he's going to make a good move. Has to slam on the brakes. And Darkser was not ready for it. And it's Darkser Cradium. Those Solstice with the racing stripes are lurking. Coming out of turn number six, Darkster's going to go off. Cradium's going to get alongside him. Let's go down one spot. And their teammates headed into the corkscrew. It's Darkster's position. There's Cradium. Darkster, again, he's off. And now Cradium's going to move in. I think Darkster's just losing it here a bit. Got to get his composure and focus. Eyes up front. And right now, I think he's just caught looking in his rearview mirror. Another team battle is uh, AMR Aftermath and Nightlock are still going at it. They came out of the pits dead even, and they've just been nose to tail the whole time here, too. Battling side by side. And that's allowed d -Tech a little bit of breathing space out in front of them. Here comes Menace now out of the pits. It's Prod and Prod. And then AMR, AMR. BRZ, BRZ, S2000, S2000. So it is Prod versus AMR. AMR is in front of Prod in the team standing. So Prod needs this. 
D-Tech and Menace, they got to know where they're standing here. If they have any chance of making up some team standings, they got a perfect opportunity right now. Nightlock making a look here, taking a look on his teammate. And they're going to go side by side underneath the mother's bridge here. M-Sport, he doesn't got care about these team battles. He wants positions. And he's going to get alongside Nightlock here. Turn number six, he's clean this time around. You can see that S2000's got somewhere. Yeah, M Sport S2000 has the pace in the wall on these guys. M Sport has the pace on these guys. He clipped the wall on turn one, and then a few laps later, he had an issue coming up the hill that he collected damage. He quickly pit after that, but it dropped him way down the order. Now he's trying to recover. Um, he definitely has the pace to go through these guys, but I don't know if he's got the time to do it. M Sport finished race number one in sixth. Ahead of these guys, so you're right. I know he's got pace here. The move under turn number 11. And a slight touch there on the aftermath. Otherwise, clean move and look at him go. He's ready. He does not need to race these guys. He's clearly looking at Prod Menace and Prod D-Tech up in front of him. And look at here he comes in. He's in the right car, Ajax. He's in the S2000. Against another S2000, though, so kind of neutral out. We have another S2000 battle at second and third with Savon and Lawrence battling it out. And this is working into Diablo's favor. If these guys are slowing each other down, Diablo on the undercut is making up the time and he's finding himself in second place as soon as these guys pit. So this is Savon, this is Lawrence. Yet to make their pit stops, lap number 11. Pull up the mini map. And Harmonic's not making his pit. And here we got a taker. And that's going to be Lawrence. He's going to leave Savon to lap on his own. So Harmonic, Savon, Lawrence Pitts from third will go to fourth. GTR Roadkill, he's going to move into third. And Roadkill pull up his, let's see here. Should be able to pull up tire wear and not made his pit stop with 30% wear. If you want to, jump to Darkster, because there is a whole mess of cars back here. Darkster just picked Darkster his way around the Aftermath ball. and Cradium. And it's, they've been swapping positions in every turn, these guys. Darkster, Cradium, Aftermath, 12th, 13th, 14th. Crossing the line to start their lap number 12. Almost lifting over that crest. See a lockup from a driver in front. Cradium holding on to that position in front of Aftermath. Oh, a touch. And there's contact between Aftermath and Cradium. Aftermath's going to have the inside here, though. Turn number two. And move made. d is going to go off, and what a tough race from this guy. Broad d -Tech. Currently sitting in 10th, started this race in 1st, had a huge off there in the corkscrew earlier on in this race. Uh, Prod D-Tech currently sitting in 10th place. And Nightlock ready to make a move here. Just a little bit of an update on the guys further up the pack. Diablo is in front of Lawrence after Lawrence has come out of the pit. Diablo in front of Lawrence. But Diablo currently in fourth. How has he done this? <laughs> well, you know, we should go to... We'll go to Diablo here. In fourth, Roadkill yet to pit. Can he see Roadkill? Mm, not quite. I can't make him out. Oh, you know what? He can see him. Here is number four. That is Diablo and bubble number three. Right there. That is GTR Roadkill. Clearly a gap that Diablo can make when Roadkill chooses to pass. Save on though, that's another question. Harmonic may be out of his sights. 
I think Harmonic's got... Once Harmonic pits, I think he's going to come right out around GTR Roadkill. Um, so one and two. Harmonic and, and save on both pit. Yeah, so this is really shaking out here. Um, Diablo is the man to watch at the moment. Stay on board, Diablo. FYI, it's Lawrence behind him in fifth. You can see him just making his way around that turn number 10 now. So Lawrence could also be a guy to watch here. We ride aboard Diablo on lap number 14 of 17. We're going to pass someone in the pits. We are indeed going to pass that save on. Diablo has moved into, I guess, what would be third place once Roadkill decides to pit. So Diablo, after all of this, has a very good chance of making another podium. Savon came out of the pit and found the one car spot in between Lawrence and GG Racing and slotted himself in there perfectly to block off GG Racing and stay right on Lawrence's bumper. Harmonic in first. Roadkill second. LZR Diablo finds his way into third. This is Lawrence Savon in AMS GG Racing in a battle for fourth. Coming around to turn number six. It's been a tricky one tonight. And we are clearing this time around. Headed up the Ray Hall straight and cresting up to the blind apex. That is the corkscrew. Three stories down. Savon into a defensive position here from GG. GG looking to get aggressive. He was on the podium last time around. He likes podiums, and he wants another one here. In race number two, Savon wants those championship points. GG looking very, very threatening, and here comes a passing opportunity in turn number 11. Not quite. And we'll stay here. I mean, it looks to be a lot of action. <laughs> From ninth through the rest of the field to the back of the order, but this is where the points really matter here. Lawrence, Savon, Gigi Lawrence got the race one here. Race one win. And uh, just off the podium, this would be his first non podium finish if this is the way this race ends. So a little bit of report from what's going on in the back. Uh, M Sport has made his way past the Prod guys. And he's in ninth. Prod, uh, Prod, well, they keep switching back and forth to not helping me out. The two Prod guys are battling for ninth and tenth, and M Sport is actually in eighth at the moment. Um, Menace is in tenth, and D Tech R is in ninth, with uh, closely followed by Nightlock and Dark Sir. You know, in front of Lawrence, that would be Diablo. So maybe we'll go to D. We'll go to Lawrence's perspective here. There's Roadkill in front of Diablo. Roadkill still yet to pit, running out of opportunities to do so. GTR Roadkill driving the tires off his RX8. Here is Lawrence in fourth, and Savon, he's sizing him up. Into turn number one, Gigi's going to think about taking a move here. Remain unchanged, Lawrence, Savon, Gigi, AMR, LSEM, and AMS. Diablo may pass Roadkill outright. So Roadkill clearly going to fold on this order. He's got to make the pit stop now. It obviously will not be able to pit on his last lap. I know GG's off again in turn number six. Doesn't look like it's cost him too much time here. And maybe settling for sixth position. Coming down to that corkscrew, our fastest driver is still El Amar Harmonic, and he is still our leader here.
And there goes Roadkill, and Diablo will take over uh, into second position. Lawrence will sneak into third. Savon just off the podium here in fourth. And AMS Gigi here in fifth place. 2.24 miles around left here of Laguna Seca. And their final time around turn number one. Lawrence, Savon, AMS GG Racing. Any last requests or shouts of where we should take our cameras here? Our final time around Laguna Seca. It's kind of quieted throughout the pack. Um, a lot of these guys have found themselves in space. And I think we got to highlight Harmonic. He made his way through the pack expertly, found himself out in front all by himself, and really, really nailed this race to earn himself the win. Here he is, LMR Harmonic, made his way through the corkscrew for a final time and looks to secure his second win of the season and second win in consecutive weeks. LMR Harmonic, two turns remaining here for the S2000. And number 273 Honda S2000 here in race number two at Laguna Seca. LMR Harmonic takes the win. Around number three. Behind him is going to be LZR Diablo. Leading this championship. Behind him will go to GG Racing in fifth. Any changes here? No. Lawrence, Savon, GG, three, four, and five. Well, Hop down the order to 10th because there's some action behind there. See a menace in. Darkser 11th for 12th. We'll go to Darkser quickly here. Any last dive bomb? He's going to try it. <laughs> Turn number 11. It's Solstice versus BRZ. It's a drag race to the finish. And Menace is going to make the drive. And Menace will finish for 11th place over Darkser there. Woo! It's getting hot here in the GT300, and the championship is certainly heating up. Harmonic versus Diablo. Certainly got a little more interesting tonight. And you know what? We were, you said before the race started. Lawrence, can he make that jump? Can he join these two guys? I know we're seeing Harmonic's part of this group. Consider the drop round, folks. Once that happens, Harmonic's going to be there. But you called him out. You said, Lawrence, can you make the move tonight? And I think he did. He got the race win and got another point. He got the, he got the qualifying. He, he qualified on pole. He didn't quite get the race win, unfortunately. Um, um, Excuse me, you're still, right. He still needs that. And we're looking at Diablo and Lawrence and saying, race one in this event, is this going to be causing their Laguna Sega to be their drop round? Diablo got, what, a fifth place and a second place. We're, we're considering that a drop round because of how dominant he's been so far in the series. And something like that that low of a score being your or that high of a score being your drop round really doesn't help out harmonic who had a real struggle in round one so it's gonna be really tight when these guys do get to that final event because that drop round factors in so much that it makes harmonica real contender and every single position here is gonna count it's just so tight in this top six well, Harmonic got two race wins here at the Bundesliga. A near-perfect night and just got out-qualified by AMR Lawrence. Uh, AMR Lawrence did finish fourth and third. So, correction, thank you. Uh, just off the podium in race number one. Got the podium here in race number two. Uh, our full and complete race order, though. Hey, Jax, you want to help us out? Yeah, so LMR Harmonic takes home the win with the best time of 132.9, closely followed by a 132.9 of Diablo, so both of them cracking the 132s. 
Lawrence is in third. Um, Save on 2K comes home in fourth. GG Racing in a solid fifth. A good night from those two. Um, solid points keeps them in the uh, uh, position to be a contender for the podium in the championship. Uh, first time seeing them tonight or in the series. Overdrive comes home in sixth. Uh, GTR Roadkill after staying out very long in uh, on his tires makes a second to last lap pit. Um, he ends up seventh. M Sport recovers after the uh, lap one incident and another incident a little bit, a few laps later, for eighth position. Prod D Tech R in ninth. Nightlock sneaks past Prod Menace to take tenth and Prod Menace in eleventh. Darkster sinks back to twelve. AMR Aftermath in thirteenth. Apex Fuego in fourteenth. DJ K72 is in fifteenth and Cradium in sixteenth. So there you have it. Our race number two has come to a conclusion. But maybe you want to take a look at the forms this week. Will Lawrence file an SI? I don't know. That's a tough one. Clearly Diablo made a mistake under brakes, left off, lifted off. And I think that's key. Once he knew that he made the mistake, he gave the position back to Lawrence. So, I think Diablo did enough. Clearly, damage done. Uh, and then, but on the following and final lap, it was Lawrence making contact with Diablo. So, you know, if I'm Lawrence, now that I'm kind of thinking about it, maybe I stay off the forums for the next few days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's you go back and review it. Is it a cumulative thing? Is it two separate incidents? You gotta kind of factor that in as a steward. There was a lot going on in the mid pack with some guys with the prod menace guys and um, Nightlock and Dark Sir. There was a lot of guys in a small amount of area, and some of them ended up off track or spinning. So it's gonna be interesting. I, I think it's gonna be lively. I think there's gonna be a few SIs from the mid pack group. I don't know if Lawrence or Diablo, either of them will look into it, just because it kind of worked itself out in that aspect. Um, but I, th I definitely think there's going to be some activity for the stewards to look at. Certainly indeed. Well, our round number three is coming to a conclusion here at Laguna Seca, and uh, it's Harmonic who took the double win. And race number one, it was Harmonic. GG gets his first podium in LSE on the save on 2K. In race number two, it was Harmonic again. Diablo with a recovery race. And AMR Lawrence rounds out our podium. For everyone here at YMTV, it's been a pleasure having you guys tune in and watch. For Ajax, my name is Andy, a.k.a. THR Flip Mode. Thank you very much for watching the DT300. We will see you Sunday for the 2019 British GT Esports Championship. We we'll hope you come back here to YMTV. Until then, again, thank you for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe on your way out. And have a good night, everyone. We'll see you next Thursday for round number four of the GT300. Congratulations to LMR Harmonic.